Hello again, Kons here, and today I'm going to be holding your hand through the macro process, showing you exactly what to download and where to download it from. I've made a macro for you, I've linked it on Google Drive, again links for everything will be in the description. I'll show you exactly what to download, where to put it, how to use it, in order to do the automatic investigation farming stuff that I've been posting about on Twitter. Um, yeah, these are the ones I got. This was over the course of three nights farmed. A good amount of five and four boxes and then uh, also some threes and twos. I got a lot more threes and twos, but I had to delete them to make space for like more higher tier ones. So just a few disclaimers. I wasn't able to solve the whole uh, tail rider exhaustion thing. If you want to deal with that, you could maybe adapt the macro for your own needs by posting one normal quest between each of these. But I don't think that that would work. You can maybe find a way around it. Uh, additionally, the macro doesn't work 100% of the time, sometimes it misses a few inputs or whatever, but I've gotten it, I've sort of iterated on it and got it to work uh, fairly reasonably. Sorry this video took me so long to make by the way, the initial macro corrupted and took me a long time to get them uh, working again. But uh, yeah, I guess the only other thing to mention is that you're supposed to do this overnight. I'm not suggesting that you leave this macro on while you want to play Monster Hunter World, no that's not the idea. I always get comments like that like, oh why would you do this when you could just in gather tracks yourself like yeah obviously you can but the point is you can do this like overnight or something or while you're asleep or while you're doing errands or whatever you can just let this run it's completely automated um but yeah i'll cut some footage of of downloading what you need to download so you want to go to the ps4 remote play website you can just google ps4 remote play or check the link in the description you then want to scroll down to whichever user you are pc or mac i don't know if the ps4 macro software works on mac but i i've, I've heard that it does and then you just want to click on download for Windows and PC, that button there, big one that goes blue when you hover over it. That'll download PS4 Remote Play to your system, wait for that to be completed and then just run the installer. Also there's some stuff here about setting up your PS4 system, which you will need to follow. I don't think I go over that in this video, I didn't catch a foot for it, but you just go into the settings and press like three buttons, it's really easy. But yeah, you want to run the installer and just follow the instructions. They're fairly self-explanatory, but I'll go through the process here. This will download PS4 Remote Play to your system. You can then run it via run or just keep an eye on where it gets downloaded to. Uh, you can see it sort of lists the file location here. So if you ever lose it and you can't find it, you can always just check there. Put it somewhere you can remember just in case that does happen. But once the installer is done, you can run PS4 Remote Play and you'll see this. You then need to connect your DualShock controller to your computer via USB and press the options button. It'll then try and find sort of your controller and your profiles and stuff. You might need to do some profile setup. And there we go, we have it running. You can see the left hand side of the screen got a little bit confused there, it's because I minimized the window. But yeah, now we're gonna download PS4 Macro. Again, you can just Google that or check the link in the description. Go to the GitHub page. Still don't fully know how GitHub works, but anyway, you want to click on the download latest version here button. That'll take you to a separate page that sort of lists the releases. We want this one, the most recent version, and you can see there's a download link for the zip file, uh, for the sort of zip of all the files that you need. So just click on that, download everything, then go to your downloads and you'll be able to extract it. You can see I've extracted it just now. I've just right clicked on it and pressed extract all, it's not that difficult. I also renamed it because my computer remembered that I'd previously downloaded the software, but that won't happen to you. We can check out that file, that folder now and you can see everything is here. All of the stuff it needs to function and even the executable file itself. That's what you run to actually run PS4 Macro. You can make a shortcut to that and throw it on your desktop or just put this somewhere safe if you'd like. And there we go, we have PS4 Macro running. I won't show you how to record macros, let me know if you want me to show you how to do that. I'm going to just give you my one and you can run it. If you, need to, if you want some explanations on how to actually use PS4 Macro, let me know. But speaking of my macro, I've uploaded it to sort of Google Drive. Uh, I've got a link for that in the description, so just follow that. It'll take you straight to the XML file. These macros are all saved as XML files, by the way. You can see it's up here, quite a lengthy, disgusting file. You just want to click on download. It'll probably take a while because it's quite a large macro. This one lasts for more than 50 minutes, and this is even after running it through the compressor. But just bear with it. Then you want to copy that into the folder of PS4 Macro, the thing that we just downloaded. So you can see I'm copying it here. I'm dump, jumping into the folder for PS4 Macro. And I'm pasting it. It's because when you go into PS4 Macro, this is where it looks for all of your macros that you've saved. So you'll want to put it here. And so yeah, you click on file. I, it didn't capture properly, but you click on file, you click on open, you click on that XML file that you just downloaded and that's it. Then all you do is go to the quest you want to run. 
Uh, this one here is, for example, I'm doing Namiel. You want it to be at the top of the list, by the way, and I'll talk about this at the end of the video. But you start up the quest, you get it to the point that I show you on screen where you've accepted the quest, but you haven't departed yet. And then you start the macro and it'll do everything else on its own. It takes a while for it to actually accept the quest. Um, and I'll talk about what these buttons do in a second. But yeah, you have to wait until like 13,000 on the timer or something for it to to actually start the quest. But yeah, you press the play button. You can pause it at any time with the pause button, which is the second one. You can stop and start again with the stop button, which is the third. The first button is obviously play, and the last button is record. Again, if you want me to show you how to sort of record macros and, and, and mess with them, let me know. But for now, I'll just give you my macro and that should be enough. So yeah, you gotta wait a bit of time. It should, I think, take until like 13,000 on the timer. Uh, it, this, it does some stuff behind the scenes. It'll make more sense once you loop. I know it takes a bit of time. It, there's a little bit of redundancy built into the macro, but if you're leaving it on overnight, it's really not that big a deal. And it should hopefully go off now. There we go. And yeah, this is all happening on its own, by the way. I'm not touching the uh, I'm not touching the controller or anything. This is all being done via PS4 macro. It'll take a couple seconds just to make sure that the, the load has completed in case you don't have an SSD. And then it'll run off. Again, I sort of built in some redundancy here. You can see I'm running into the wall just because I didn't know if like other users would... Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure how long the loading time would take if you don't have an SSD and also I wanted to make sure that it was definitely at the right position in case like the spawn location specific can vary a tiny bit. Yeah, a little bit of redundancy built in like this, but um, yeah, you'll see we jump down, we activate the rider via the radial menu, and again, stick until the end. Uh, I'll put a timestamp on screen or something where you should skip until uh, to see, but there are some important things you need to consider when running the macro. Like, yeah, I need to have autosave on. Oh, yes, have autosave on. I forgot about that. But yeah, I'm not touching it. You can see right now I'm messing around with OBS. I'm on my browser. I'm showing you I'm doing other stuff. Um, this is a bad joke. I shouldn't have made it. But yeah, like, this is, uh, I'm not touching the controller at all, this is all being done automatically, and you can now do whatever you want. You can go to bed, or watch some anime, or do whatever it is you <laughs> you do in your spare time. But yeah, as far as the considerations, you saw that we needed the quest to be at the start of the list, or I guess you will see that uh, if you run the macro. For it to repost the same quest over and over again, it needs to be first. What else? Generally, I find Kirin quests the best. But I didn't have any because I deleted all my quests by accident to make this video and so I, I accidentally got rid of all my quests and Namiel was the first one I got. So yeah, what you'll notice is that five minutes into the quest it will sort of go into the map and detach you from seeking out the monster so your tail rider doesn't follow it. Sometimes that process fails but it's not a huge deal if it does, it just means the, the next 50 minutes will be slightly less efficient. But yeah, now the tail rider will go backwards and forwards between all the various gathering nodes and all of the tracks that it can gather. And the, the macro is just spamming B. You can see it's using everything. It's gathering everything, picking up every slinger ammo, every consumable, the spore puffs and everything else. It's just spamming circle basically. And it picks up all the tracks. And you just leave this to run. And it will reset itself after the 15 minutes has run out. It will then repost the quest and keep going so you can sort of keep it looping overnight. So there are a few considerations to make. The quest has to be in the Coral Highlands. You have to start at camp. But you, basically you have to start it exactly the way I showed you. It needs to be a monster that doesn't aggro, and there can't be any monsters that aggro in the map. I found that Kirin and Namiel are your best bets, and Kirin is generally better than Namiel, although there's not a huge amount of difference between them. You want the quest to last for 50 minutes, definitely. You don't want it to last for like 20 minutes, because the macro will continue for 50 minutes regardless, so you'll just be wasting time. You need your investigations to be at the top, so you'll need to deregister any quests that appear higher than it. Now the way that that works is if you have a quest list, it's sort of in the order that it is in the investigation list. So if you go to the investigation list, if for example I was to accept these three quests, they would always appear first Rajang, then Namiel, and then Kushala because the orders are three, five, and seven. It's completely sort of um, ordered, it's based on the order that they appear in this list. So usually what I do is I unregister all the quests that I don't want. Then I register all of the Kirin quests that I find that last 50 minutes. So for example, this one's 35 minutes, so I wouldn't go for that. And you can sort it via target to get all the Kirin quests up to the top and just pick out the ones that last for 50 minutes. Yep, these all seem to be usable. 
That's 35 minutes. Here's another 50. Okay. And so that's how you get all the quests that you need in order. Make sure you stock up a reasonable amount. Each quest lasts 50 minutes. And you need it to last an entire night or however long you're going to be checking on it for. Oops. So do be sure that, for example, this one lasts five times. I can post this quest five times, which means I have roughly something like four hours or so. And so sort of these three, these two or three quests should be enough to last me the night and maybe the work day as well. Even if you only have one quest to begin with, that's more than enough. If you don't have one quest, I would say sniff regular Tempered Elders or Tempered Level 3s, maybe Jang or something with Gilly Mantle, until you get one of these to spawn, one of these Kirin quests, and then you can, or Namiel quests, and then you can go from there. The item pouch is quite important. Make sure you have uh, as few items as possible in your item pouch when you start. If you have your item full of like Might Seeds and stuff, then eventually as you're moving throughout the Coral Highlands, you'll pick up these items, these random consumables, and on these random gatherable items and they'll fill up your inventory and then you won't be able to gather anymore. Additionally, you have to keep an eye on the radial menu. Make sure that in quest settings you have a sort of radar ride up near the top because it selects this for you and this is how it selects it. So make sure you have them at, at the top center definitely has to be radar ride. I usually like to do the other ones as well just in case there's some input weirdness. As far as the item set goes, uh, uh, equipment set goes, I don't think there's anything, any of these in particular are super important except for maybe some of the scent hound and scholar and like other scout fly related skills. But even then I don't think they do anything for investigations. I think people checked into that, but I'm not 100% sure. So just run whatever you like really. It doesn't make much of a difference. I guess stealth and intimidator are quite nice though to stop little monsters from aggroing onto you. When the tail rider is exhausted, there's nothing you can do. You just gotta eat the 50 minute loss. If you're paying attention to it, you can just restart the macro. You can abandon the quest and restart the macro. But obviously if you're doing it overnight, there's nothing you can do. And aside from that, if you're running out of quest space, make sure you go back in every now and then and get rid of all of the level threes and twos that you don't want uh, so that you don't end up overrunning the good ones. And if there's any particularly good quests, make sure to, re to register them so they don't despawn. And I think that covers basically everything. So yeah, feel free to comment if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope this helped and I hope you can up your decoration farming game via this method. Yeah, so by focusing on only having level 4s and level 5s, uh, particularly with easier monsters and easier conditions, less of those 2 player only ones and more of the sort of 4 player 50 minute quests with multiple carts, you're less likely to fail, first of all, and when you do pass, you're going to get more decorations, sort of 4 or 5 as opposed to 3 or 2. Uh, so generally, this is a quite a handy method to improve your gains on your decoration farm. But yeah, have a lovely day. Take it easy. Bye-bye.